Shalom Yashar Allah First and foremost I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honour and glory to the Heavenly Father And His only begotten Son Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Racha Kwadash Double honours to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well And taught me this 100% truth Double salutations to the Akiyam out there Spreading this word in truth and sincerity And Shalawam to the few Akwath that be listening in today And back at you with another lesson entitled We are made perfect through suffering Alright <clears throat> And the greatest example of that statement Is Yahweh Shai himself Our Lord and Saviour Which by the way The name Yahweh Shai means um, He delivers He deliverer You know he's going to deliver the elect <clears throat> Excuse me From the, the pending destruction Of Babylon the Great A.K.A. America And he's also going to deliver his elect From the four corners of the earth But that main deliverance Is going to take place In uh, Babylon the Great A.K.A. America Alright And then to prove that it's also going to take place Across the other uh, uh, You know other parts of the earth You can read Jeremiah 16 and 14 all right, <clears throat> but you know he had to go through the ultimate suffering. You know he was ridiculed. He was he was mocked. You know he was abused, and then ultimately he was nailed to that cross. Man, they put a crown of thorns on his head, whilst they was mocking him, saying, "Well, if you be the son of the Most High, deliver yourself." You know, but Yahweh Shah understood. That it wasn't his time To you know That's not what he was sent At that time to do He was sent unto the lost sheep Of the nation of Israel And to die for our sins If it wasn't for Yahweh Shai's sacrifice We would have no cloak for our sins right now man Alright So at that time when Yahweh Shai came back on the earth That's what he needed to fulfill But when Yahweh Shai comes back now You know the second coming He's coming to wage war against these devils He's coming to take back what's his That, you know, as, as it says in the Lord's Prayer As it is done on um, let, You know, let that will be done on earth as it is in heaven Alright Yahweh Shai is getting ready to establish his kingdom Here on the planet earth And to get rid of the wicked rulership that we have spread throughout the four corners of the earth currently Alright He's coming to, to To put these devils Back in, the, in their rightful position Which is at the bottom Alright but Remember Yahweh Shai Had to go through that suffering Okay He had to teach the word Deal with the wicked scribes and Pharisees Who wouldn't hearken unto him Who wouldn't believe Okay, same way we have to deal with that now So we, we need to bear our own cross Alright, for our testimony I know that our work and labour of love is not in vain As it says in, uh, what's that, Hebrews 6 and 10 Alright, we're not, we're not doing this for no reason man We understand there's a reward at the end of this thing And you know the scriptures speak about He who shall endure until the end The same must be saved all right, and it looks like this cat over here, <laughs> he wants to hear the word, but he's he, he just gone now. You know, I'm, I'm just sitting in the car right now, and this cat, he just come sit right next to the car, and he, 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 you know, he literally just sat there facing me, you know, because all the earth is going to be at rest once the sons of the Most High are established in their rightful positions, which is in rulership, man, under Yahweh Shai. You can read, uh, what's that, Romans 8 and 18, I believe You know, the whole world is, 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 is groaning Because this devil is in power right now All creation want the, the, the sons of the Most High to be established, man Proverbs 29 and 2 When the wicked are in authority, the people mourn When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, right? And the people ain't rejoicing right now Look at the state of the world right now You can't sit and tell me 
that the people are rejoicing, man. That's that's bullshit, man. You know, you must be living in La La Land. All right. But, you know, without further ado, let's get the scriptures, man. Let's hit the precepts. And we're going to start off here in uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 16, in which it reads, <clears throat> We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. And this is Esau speaking, right? This is the, if you want to know how Esau Edom's mind works, his, his state of mind, his deep utmost thoughts read wisdom of solomon the second chapter man all the way through all right but we're starting at verse 16 and it says we are esteemed of him of him as counterfeits and that's correct now you've got this whole anti-s thing coming out all right and they're, they're trying to cancel out kanye even though he's saying things that are truthful man Th those jewish people are not the true people of the lord man all right, so they are counterfeits, they are frauds. All right, and according to James 5, and I think that's verse 8, we as the true Israelites, we are kept back by fraud. You've got these devils sitting in high positions, right? Of our identity, man. This is identity theft, man. You know? But this is another form of suffering that we have to endure. Until Yahweh Shai returns. When Yahweh Shai returns, he's going to put all things back in his rightful order, man. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 16. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed. So, yeah, even though we're going through it now, the message we're preaching is that there's hope for us. We got the kingdom of heaven at hand, you know. Um... We're going to be in perpetual rulership. We are going to have these other nations that have been, that have had us in derision. We are going to have them as our slaves, man. That's the hope. Um, 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 uh, you know, that's what we're preaching. You know, we're letting them know that the end of the just, which would be the Israelites, is blessed and maketh his boast that the most high, Yahweh, which Yahweh means he is, he exists. That's the name of the Heavenly Father, the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls God. All right. And maketh his boast that the Most High Yahweh is his father. Because that, that is literally what uh, uh, um, Yasharala means. Prince of the power. And power is another word for God. We are princes of God, man. So yes, the Heavenly Father Yahweh is our father, man. He's the father of the Israelites, not the small hats, not the Edomites, not the Amalekites, right? Not these other heathen nations. He's the father of the Israelites, which consists of you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. And you make up the 12 tribes of Israel. You see? Verse 17. Let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him so yeah we we you know we, we preach this word all right we let the people know our people know who we are and and and, and what's to come right you know we bring forth these prophecies we bring them out and uh these devils basically have the mindset of well yeah we're gonna see if his words be true because these devils you know what's that psalms 49 talks about how their inward thoughts are you know their, their, their houses shall continue forever these devils believe that um, they're going to be uh, 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 ruling on the, thro on the throne perpetually. All right. And they're trying to find ways to offset the prophecies, man. They had that, that, uh, that AI computer. Uh, what was it called, man? Uh, damn, I did a lesson on this months ago, man. Uh, there was a particular computer that they used, right? And it was, uh, uh, you know, to to basically predict the outcomes if they was to try different things. And all things led to these devils going into captivity and being taken out of the position of rulership. So there's nothing these devils can do against the truth but for it. All right. This, this, uh, uh, in the book of Acts, chapter five, around verse, verse 38, it says how, um, you know, if the council be of if this council be of man, 
it shall be brought to naught. But if it shall be of the Most High, it, it, it can't, you know. Unless you be found willing to fight against the, the Heavenly Father, which these devils, they're so prideful, they're actually going to fight against the Heavenly Father in these last days, man. Revelation 12. All right. That war in heaven. You see? And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. So they don't believe that the Lord, these Edomites don't believe the Lord is coming back, man. All right. Verse 18. For if the just man be the son of the most high, he will help him. This is why these devils inflict such hell upon our people. Because they, they don't, these devils, you know, although they, they logically, they know there's a higher power. They don't like the idea of the fact that there's a higher power above these devils that's governing things. So they try and exit out and rule it out by way of their science and come up with all these different theories. Like you got your Big Bang Theory, you got your evolution theory to pretty much X out the idea of there being a God. You know, making the people believe they have free will. You are your own God. You know, you, you create your own reality, which is bullshit, man. This is the Heavenly Father's movie. Everything is scripted. Now, the Heavenly Father can have you think that, yeah, you know, you, 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 you're manifesting your own life. And he can put you under that, that um, uh, um, deceive, this deceit, right? But still... You, your every move is being governed by Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You know, Proverbs 20 and 24, a man's goings are of the Lord. Therefore, how can a man understand his own way? You got Job 33, around the 15th verse, talking about how, you know, the Heavenly Father writes of his instructions uh, 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 um, in your minds when, when you know, you're, you're in the deep sleep. All right. Then that's when the Heavenly Father comes to you and he writes your instructions for what you're going to do that uh, the next day when you wake up, man. All right? So there ain't no such thing as free will. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 18. Again, for if the just man be the son of the Most High, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. So that's why, once again, they, they put us through all this hell, man. But also, you know, the Heavenly Father is using Esau, Edom as, as his whooping stick. You know, let's go to Isaiah chapter 10 real quick. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 5. Oh, Assyrian, which your modern day Assyrian would be these Edomites, right? The rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. All right. And, and, and this is, uh, and you know, this is how the Heavenly Father is inflicting his judgment upon his people by sending uh, 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 this wicked devil, this Edomite, these Edomites onto us uh, and to afflict us. All right. It says, verse six, I will send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. Will I give him a charge? To take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. You see? And that's why we catch all this hell. Alright? But ultimately, we understand that we're catching this hell because we was the ones that transgressed the law, statutes and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Bringing us down into this, into this low position that we're in. But also, the Heavenly Father designed it to be that way because we needed to learn... Uh, um, um, you know, good and evil Alright, so from Adam Adam, he was programmed to go off All the way up until now, man The last, you, you, you know, up until this generation here In which, um, you know We're looking to be beamed up into those chariots And to be changed in the twinkling of an eye As it is written in um um uh, what's that first corinthians chapter 15 okay back to wisdom of solomon 2 and 19 
Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. And this is why, you know, as Israelites, especially as though as Israelites in this ministry, in this truth, we catch the most hell, man. Because not only have you got the physical counterpart of Satan bringing that hell upon us, but you've also got uh, the spiritual demon Satan working against us, trying to sift us out of this truth, trying to afflict our souls, man. To get us to say in our minds that, you know, you know what? Uh, the Lord, he ain't working with us. You know, the Lord don't exist. You know, because if he did exist, why the hell am I going through all this suffering? You know, that that's what Satan wants you to believe. He wants to put you in that mindset. All right. To get you out the truth. When the reality is, this is how the heavenly father deals with, with his chosen. All right. Why did you why do you think it says in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity because even these these precious stones and these diamonds you see they there has to there's a there's a very vigorous process in order to extract those uh precious metals man and stones all right they have to go through through a vigorous process man it's the same way we have to go through a vigorous process for us to be perfected. Through suffering, we are made perfect, man. All right? No pain, no gain, man. Nothing worth having in life comes easy. We have to learn to, to, to love, to suffer. All right? Because that's where we, you know, we'll reap the rewards more and we'll, we'll appreciate it that much more once the Heavenly Father establishes, establishes us in our rightful positions, man, which is above these nations. Psalm 37 says, those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth, man. Esau, Edom, he can't give you that promise. He can't promise you the whole entire earth. You know? But he can give you a whole lot of false promises, though. Okay, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 20. Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his own saying, uh, he shall be respected. And see, so, so, so they basically, they, they want to afflict us and pretty much get us to turn our back on the Lord. All right. By putting us through all this hell. That's why the scriptures talks about those who endure until the end the same shall be saved, man. Because as as the, the you know the the uh, uh, the hour of temptation comes closer, you know it's not going to get any easier, man. It's only going to get harder. All right. Verse twenty one. Here's the thing. Such things did they imagine, and were deceived. So Esau thinks he can put us through all this hell, right? Afflict us this way. And, 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 and he's, you know, going to get what he wants ideally, which is his birthright back. You know, not understanding that, as we just read in Isaiah 25, he's being used as the rod of the Heavenly Father's anger. And once, the, you know, the Heavenly Father decides that it's time for his, uh, you know, his elect to be uh, uh, gathered up and to be saved. Esau Edom is not going to be needed anymore to afflict the nation, man. All right, and then he's gonna he's gonna be destroyed, and he's gonna be put back in his rightful position, which is in captivity at the bottom, man, bottom of the barrel. You see, so such things did they imagine, and were deceived, for their own wickedness hath blinded them. It says in Obadiah one, I think verse three. The, the, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Because it's like Esau forgot, right? Esau forgot. He's the basest of men. Esau must have forgot, man. In fact, Esau did forget that he's the basest of men. All right? Because he's been in power for what seems like quite a long time now. He, he thinks he's the shit. No, man. We... Uh, 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 we're, we're the shit, man. Us Israelites. 
you know, we have that royal look. Us Israelites, we grew up thinking that, you know, our dark skin, our melanated skin was a curse. You know, we was always mocked, we was always ridiculed. Oh, you got big lips, big nose, uh, uh, you know, whatever, or oh, Afro hair. All right, but we are made in the image of, 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 of the Heavenly Father, man. We have that royal look. When Esau came out of, out of uh, uh, Rebekah, right, in Genesis 25, what did Isaac say? He said, I Shashua, meaning wasted away is he, Esau. That's where he gets his name from. Because he came up, he had no pigment. You know, looking red as hell, blood showing forth uh, through the skin. Wasted away is he. He's wasted away, man. He, he's leprous. He has leprosy. All right? He doesn't have colour like us. Yet they try and say that they're the royal people. That's bullshit, man. They ain't made in the image of the Heavenly Father. And you know, and these Edomites in their spirits, they know that they're, they're inferior. They know something is missing because if that wasn't the case, then the tanning industry wouldn't be so lucrative as it is. All year round, you got these Edomites who want to get this fake tan on, you know, lay in that sunbed, get flipped like a pancake just to try and get that dark skin, that dark hue. Because they know in their minds of minds, in their spirit, they might not understand it, but in their spirit, they know that they, they, they're missing something. They're inferior. And we have that true royal look. But because we live in a society where everything's been turned upside down, we grow up wishing we was uh, uh, so-called white. When really and truly, as much as they hate us, they want to be us. What, 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 what's the saying? They hate us because they can't be us. We are Yasharala, princes of the power, man. And yeah, we're at the bottom now and yeah, we're suffering, but we are being perfected. And the Lord, Lord willing, we be a part of the elect. He's going to use his elect, right, to magnify his name, to show his power, man. Brothers are going to be appointed with spiritual power to ward off their enemies, man. Isaiah 59 and 19, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them, man. We're going to be able to fly, to disappear and do all sorts of acts, man, which we're going to read in the next chapter anyway. Wisdom of Solomon 3. Hold on, let me, let me just take a sip. We're going to start at the top. <clears throat> this is the book of wisdom of Solomon 3 and verse 1. <clears throat> but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High, and there shall no torment touch them. All right? No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. What's that? Isaiah 54 and 16. The Lord is going to fight for us, man. And one of the ways he's going to fight for us is by fighting through us. You know, once again, going into uh, raising up uh, certain men with spiritual power. All right. Verse two. In the sight of the unwise, which would be these devils. The so-called white man, the Edomites, the small hats. All right. In the sight of the un and, and, and even these other nations and, and, and two thirds of our people, because they're not wise. They don't understand this truth. Therefore, they're not wise. All right. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die and their departure is taken for misery. So, yeah, because they see us here suffering in the flesh, catching hell, going through it, being at the bottom in society. They, they think that we're doing this. For, uh, uh, they, 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 there's no reason why we should be doing this, basically, is what they think. OK. Verse three. And they're going from us. To be utter destruction But they are in peace Because yeah Although on the outside looking in We're suffering And we're, we're you know we're, we're, we're being afflicted We're going through hell 
we know that ultimately we are being perfected, man. So that we can be found worthy of salvation when Yahweh Shai returns. Okay? Verse uh, 4. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet their hope is full of immortality. Because that's what we're hoping for. The eternal kingdom. Death shall be swallowed up in victory, right? We're waiting for that. So that's why we endure the suffering that we're going through. Because we know ultimately we have a, um, um, a bright future ahead of us, man. And that's going to be perpetually forever, man. We're never going to die. Death is going to be swallowed up. We're going to have spiritual power. We're going to be in a position of rulership. We're going to inherit galaxies, planets. We're going to have chariots, you know. We're never going to have to work a day again. No more waking up six o'clock in the morning slaving for Esau, Eden. We're, we're going to have these other nations put in that work, man. All right? That's what we're hoping for. That's what we're waiting for. All right? So we suffer patiently. Okay? Verse 5. Um, and having been a little chastised, all right? Because, yeah, sometimes it feels like we're going through a lot. The scriptures say this is light work, man. Having been a little chastised, because if you compared it to all the things you was going to receive just for standing stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, you wouldn't complain so much, man. All right? For the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. All right? And that's what we're fighting for, for the Lord to find us worthy. Verse 6, As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. So, you know, that's why we go through these various different trials and tribulations. All right. It's the Lord testing us to see if we're worthy of him. All right. Because, you know, a lot of our people are going to fold when shit really starts to hit the fan, man. And that's why we have to pray Psalms 51 that the Lord do doth not take away his Holy Spirit from us. Because we're nothing without the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You see? Um, verse 7 And in their time of visitation When the Lord returns They shall shine Because we're going we're gonna to be shining With that power man We're going to have that glow That spiritual power You know like, like them Dragon Ball Z They go into Super Saiyan mode And you see they got that glow about them Where do you think these uh, People get their ideas from They, they, they read the scriptures man all right, you watch Black Adam, you know, you should watch that film. They, they, they get this understanding and the ideologies for their film from the scriptures, man. And we bring these scriptures out. All right. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. We're, we're going to be super fast, man. You know, which is just one, one example of spiritual power. One of the many examples you can find in the Bible. All right. But the Lord is going to raise up his elect with that power, man. But we need to go through it to get to it. All right. We need to go through the suffering, enjoy this hard season and understand, you know, keep our eyes fixated on the bigger picture. Because ultimately, that makes it a lot easier, man. When you have your whys. Why are you enduring this suffering? Why are you catching hell when you can easily just be in the world, be a nigger, you know, secure that bag, secure that woman that you want, and, 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 and you know, you got the easy life. Because, the, look, the, look, man, the, the ways of this world passeth away. Second John 2 and 15, love not the, uh, uh, the world, you know, nor the lust of the flesh, because it's all going to pass away, man. You see, we see it pass it away. So, so we need to store up our treasures in heaven where moth and dust doth not corrupt. You know? Permanent treasures, these are. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Lucky it's chapter two that I want. 
2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 Thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach Which means the anointed one Yahawashai And the things that thou has heard of me among many witnesses The same commit thou to faithful men Who shall be able to teach others also So yeah we're not meant to just learn this truth And pretty much put it in a napkin and, and, and we don't we, we become unfruitful vessels We don't spread the word You know We don't, we, we don't uh, You know We have no works to show That's not how it should be man You know We're, 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 uh, we're meant to be edifying the body Building each other up Building up the newcomers of this thing Alright Verse 3 Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Because once again, he who shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So we need to endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai, man. Remembering the fact that Yahweh Shai, he bared the greatest judgment, uh, uh, the greatest time of hell, you know. But he went through it. You gotta go through it to get to it. Where are we trying to get to? The kingdom of heaven. And we must remember this anyway, man. I, I was gonna speak on it, but I'm gonna just let the scripture say it because the scripture is pretty, bla uh, uh, pretty plain with it, man. You know that you can't misinterpret this because what's another reason why we're going through all these sufferings that we're going through now? Ultimately, because we transgressed the laws of Yahweh Shem Shai. You know, we knew there'd be consequences, but we still did. Because once again, we was made subject unto vanity. Because we had to learn the ways of good and evil. So that when, you know, righteousness is fully set upon um, the whole entire universe, not just this earth, we'll appreciate it that much bit more, man. Boy, hold on a second. That much, oh, Salaki, we'd appreciate it. That much more You know Because we would have had an example Babylon the Great A.K.A. America Is getting ready to be made into an example Of how not to be Because that land is going to be completely destroyed Uninhabitable And that's going to be a staple point in the earth And you know we're going to be flying In our chariots With our, with our, our family Alright our nation Okay Explaining to them that this is Babylon the Great This is the miracle where we served our worst captivity They, ruled, they ruled in perpetual wickedness And this was the, the, the outcome of it They're going to be made an ensample man You wait on it But anyways We're catching all this hell Also Well mainly because As I touched on we was the one that transgressed against the Heavenly Father uh, His law, statutes and commandments, man And we understand that You know So it says in Micah 7 and 9 Let me just sip this water Micah 7 and 9 I will bear the indignation of the Lord Because I have sinned against him Alright Accountability is the first step You know And a lot of our people Especially you women You fail to take accountability It's always I've done nothing wrong you got people talking about Oh I'm, a, I'm, I'm righteous You know Yeah they're wicked as hell man We understand that That you know We strive for perfection but we're in this wicked flesh So therefore We are wicked But that is why We need a saviour Read Romans 7 Alright That's why we need to be delivered From these wicked bodies man Because every day Is a battle Between the, 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 the flesh and, 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 and the spirit What does the scripture say? It says how The spirit is willing But the flesh is weak You see but anyways, Micah 7 and 9 I will bear the indignation of the Lord Because I have sinned against him Until he plead my cause And he's pleading our causes now 
right? Because, uh, um, you know, the veil of, of wickedness is, is slowly being removed. People are waking up to who these devils are. The curses are being flipped, all right? And execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. And we're beholding it now. You know, we've got this wisdom, knowledge and understanding, right? We're rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of our ability. You see? So this is a form of the Lord having mercy on us, man. We're being perfected through the sufferings that we have to endure. Job 5 and 17 speaks about despise not the chastening of the Almighty, man. All right, but let's go to the book of Hebrews. This is Hebrews chapter 12. And uh, we'll start at verse 5. And it reads, And ye have forgotten the exhortation, which exhortation is like a, uh, um, an uplifting message. Pretty much when we do these videos, it's an exhortation, man. It's to, to build you up in the spirit. You know, when you go to the book of Maccabees, what made those, uh, 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 what made the Maccabeans such great, great warriors, such great fighters, is because they was exhorted. You know, you had Judas speaking, you know, invigorating the, uh, uh, his, his host with encouraging words. And that's what made them so mighty. All right? Same way today you have the prophets of the Lord exhorting the elect of the nation of Israel to invigorate your spirit, to uplift your spirit, to give you that hope. All right. To encourage you to push forward. You see. So we're, and we're going to see the result of doing that, man. Once Yahweh Shai returns and he bestows brothers with that power. Whoo, boy, and that's going to be a sight to see, man. All right. Hebrews 12 and 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you. As unto children, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Which you see, that's contrary to popular belief. Because these people in the world believe that the Lord ain't dealing with us because we're suffering. Because we don't have things our way. But it's the opposite. This is how the Lord... He deals with you, man, because he's, he's uh, pretty much sharpening us for the time of trouble that's fastly approaching. Okay? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Verse 7, if ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Because, yeah, when you think about, like, your, your 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 physical father, if if you had him in your life, he he, he would chastise you, man. He, he might beat you with a stick, or whatever the hell he could find, you know. But ultimately, it was done to because he wanted you to stay on a certain path. You know, he didn't want you to go off, go astray, start selling drugs, gang banging, and things of that nature. So he would, you know, he would chasten you, man, to keep you in line, to keep your ass in check. And that's what the Lord is doing with his elect. Making us go through various different situations to build up our faith. Because the Lord is going to have to put us through it in order for him to work miracles, man. Because if we don't have anything to be saved from, then how's the Lord going to work his marvelous work? So we need to be put in positions where the only thing we can do is cry out unto the Lord. And he can come and save uh, um, us, man. In whatever situation we may find ourselves in. Okay. Verse 8. But if ye be without chastisement. Whereof all. Whereof all are partakers. Then ye are bastards. And not sons. Alright. So you know those Israelites who just. They're pretty much well off on this side. They're living their best life. They ain't really got nothing to worry about. They ain't in trouble like us. You know, the Lord ain't dealing with them, man. They're bastards. The Heavenly Father, he's turned his face away from them. Getting ready to destroy them, man. Soon come. All right. Uh, 
from verse 9 for we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live so yeah let the heavenly father correct us man because at the end of the day his correction is going to bring life man all right so let's endure hardness as a good soldier all right verse 10 for they verily for a few days chastised chasten us after their own pleasure but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness so you know this is all we're going through the suffering so that you know lord willing we be of the elect we can be perfected man you know we can show two-thirds of our people and the rest of the world the glory of yahweh through the works that he's going to allow his elect men to do in these last days all right Verse 11, now no chastening for the present moment, for the present seem to be joyous. All right? It's never fun when you're catching hell, you're going through it. It's never, it's never fun. All right. But, you know, no pain, no gain. You go to the gym, you train, you work out hard. You don't do an easy workout to get the body you want. You got to work out. You got to put in that hard work. All right. To see those changes in your body. Um... Yeah, wait a second. So yeah, Hebrews twelve and eleven. Now he chasteneth for the now no chastening for the present seemeth joyous, but grievous nevertheless. Afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You see. So you know we gotta go through it, man. Because, you know, ultimately all this suffering is going to lead us to perfection, man. And trust me, once we inherit those new bodies and, you know, we can't go off no more. And the Lord is fully dealing with us. We're going to realise, we're going to know that all this suffering that we went through was worth it, man. Alright. This is Second Peter chapter 2, sorry, chapter 1. And verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay. And beside this, given all diligence, Add, uh, add uh, to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness. All right. Through our patience, we are going to be made into gods. Psalms 82 and 6. For I have said, ye are gods and ye are all children of the most high. Is it not written in your law that I have said, ye are gods? John 10 and 34. All right. So this is why we need to suffer patiently, man. Verse 7. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of of our Lord Yahawashai Hamashiach. Alright. And we know. According to Isaiah 33 and 6. That wisdom and knowledge. Shall be the stability of thy times. Right. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Alright. So you know. And you know. With this knowledge. Uh, let's get Ecclesiastes real quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 18 For in much wisdom is much grief And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow And why is that? Because you know The average nigga in the world don't understand that Esau Edom's the devil That the Bible speaks of first of all He don't understand that all these other nations Across the four corners of the earth are, Were made for our sakes To be 
um, our servants and handmaids, all right, they don't understand that um, as Israelites, the earth was created for our sakes. Yeah, you got some of us who we can't even hold a job down. We can't even get a job. We're struggling, living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, this is our world, man. Under Yahweh Shai, this is our world. So when you when you come into this truth and you understand all these things, which is just to name a few, you know, it increases your sorrow, man. Because you're like, damn, here we are. We're the greatest people on the planet Earth. We are a royal priesthood, according to Rome, uh, uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. A chosen people, a chosen generation. The Lord has set him up, set us up above all other nations. Yet look at the position we are in right now uh, uh, on the planet. But you see, we have the knowledge of that. So it, it, it you know, is more grievous unto us, man. But it's beautiful to see the prophecies of the Lord happening. And, you know, we can smell that we're soon home, man. We're soon out of here, man. We just have to endure until the end and the same shall be saved, right? Let's close out here. This is the book of 2 Maccabees. Chapter 6 and verse 12. We'll start at. Now I beseech, I beg, those that read this book, that they be not discouraged for these calamities but that they judge those punishments not to be for our uh, for destruction but a chastening of our nation all right so yeah even though the lord is bringing is you know pretty much bringing us in through the fire and we're, we're experiencing all these calamities and these fiery trials first peter 4 and 12 you know it is it is a uh, as a chastening for our nation, man. You know, to perfect us. You see? Verse 13. For it is a token of his great goodness. Because if Yahweh Shad didn't die for our sins, we would be we wouldn't be here today, man. Truth be told. Alright. For it is a token of his goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any long time. But forthwith, punished because ultimately they're going to be punished, man. Although they, you know, it seems like it's impossible at this point because this devil been ruling for so long, and you know, if you weren't learned, it's very easy for you to fall under the idea, the idea of this devil just being in perpetual rulership, and Jake can't do anything without Esau being above him, right? If you if you're unlearned, you see. Verse fourteen. For not as with other nations whom the Lord patiently forbeareth to punish Till they come to the fullness of their sins So he dealeth with us So he's basically letting Esau, Edom do his thing Alright Let his sins reach into the heavens Once it reaches its pinnacle Then the Lord is going to bring forth his wrath Unto uh, uh, this devil man Alright So 2 Maccabees chapter 6 Start verse 14 again For not with, for not as with other nations Whom the Lord patiently forbeareth to punish Till they come Till they become to the fullness of their sins So he dealeth with us Lest that being come to the height of sin Afterward he shall take vengeance on, of us so, you know, the Heavenly Father is going to take vengeance of us once he sees, uh, you know. You know, once he sees that we've pretty much uh, passed the test. All the trials and tribulations we have to endure, all the suffering we have to endure. We still made it on the other side. We still called in the name of the Lord and his only begotten son. All right. He's going to take vengeance on his elect, man. Those that stood so stiffly for his name Even when the whole world came up against them Alright So once again We are made perfect through suffering Think about how you was Before you came into this truth And compare yourself to now man You're a different person The truth changes you man And if it hasn't changed you 
then maybe you got some deep introspecting to do, or maybe you got some prayers to do, man. But you see, the Lord has opened up our spiritual eye. So we see a lot of things for what they are, man. All right? But anyways, that's all i got for today. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And until the next time, I say Shalom.